So I'm going to talk about that's okay. I'm going to talk about entire Bhagavad Gita oh. in 40 minutes. So you should focus on what I'm saying because what I'm saying, uh, what I'll tell you, it might seem something new, but it's all there in this book. It's all there in this book. And I'll show you many things which Prabhupada speaks. And it, I'm going to do a seminar now. Not a seminar, but maybe maybe in mornings. I'm going to talk about Prabhupada books. How they are, how they appear simple, but they are very deep. So, Bhagavad Gita has 18 chapters and 700 verses, we all know. Some people say 701. Shankaracharya puts it 701. But that's primarily because uh, counting of the verses is different, that's all. Otherwise, it's 700 verses, 18 chapters. And Krishna, he summarizes entire Vedic knowledge in this one book. Now, how he does that, I'm going to explain you. Now, the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita is setting the, observing the armies of battle of Kurukshetra, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, the first chapter begins with this first verse, and the first word of this chapter is Dhritarashtra. Now, that's amazing because you start a book with a villain, mm-hmm. not with a hero. <laughs> No movie starts with a villain. Especially a religious movie, no? You don't start. But it starts with Dhritarashtra. And why does Vyasadev does like that? So, uh, there's a reason behind that. Because, you know what? Krishna is special. He He's all merciful, we know. He wants to use everybody in his service. Whether it's a villain, it's a hero, it's A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z. So, for example, uh, Ram, Lord Rama, he used Lord, he used Raman in his service. He used in his service. So, Krishna uh, knows how to make best out of worst. He's genius. So, he knew Dhritarashtra is, he's, 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 he's going to end up in a mess. Because he was attached to his children, or I would say he was doing messed up there. So, he used Dhritarashtra to to make this Gita happen. Because Dhritarashtra is asking Sanjay, is it? That's what is starting. What happened in the battlefield? Dhritarashtra is becoming an instrument for us to get Bhagavad Gita from that point of time to this point of time. And that's how he, without his knowing, he is doing service to Krishna. And he's getting credit. So that's Krishna's intelligence. That's what we learn from Krishna. We should know how to make best out of the worst Prabhupada, hippies, <laughs> best out of the worst. <laughs> Prabhupada did that, same as Krishna. So, first verse is observing the armies on the battlefield. Dhritarashtra is observing battlefield. Dhritarashtra is informed by Sanjay. Kauravas are standing, Pandavas are standing, Krishna is there. And the point is, Prabhupada mentions in this, in this chapter, I'm not going to go verse by verse, it's impossible. But the three questions in the first chapter. First question is, why doesn't Arjuna want to fight? He denies to fight. Second question is, why Krishna wants this fight to happen? Krishna wants. And the third question is, um, why uh, why Bhagavad Gita starting with this chapter, observing the armies on the battlefield of Kurukshetra? Now the... Uh, does anybody know the answer? Why does Arjuna doesn't want to fight? Why, why does he deny to fight? Why? What's the problem with him? What's the problem? Confused. 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 He is having compassion. He is not just attached to his family members. That's not the point. He is a pure devotee. Now the point is, sometimes what is happening with Arjuna is, because he is seeing Bhishma, Drona and everybody in front of him, 
momentarily he is affected by illusion that's what prabhupada writes momentarily but in the hearts of heart he is not attached to anybody he is having compassion and what kind of compassion if all these people die if all these people die they will not attain shelter of krishna that's his problem and prabhupada writes in nectar of devotion prabhupada gives that example in nectar of devotion i think um, everybody has read nectar of devotion after 19th chapter no 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 after 19th chapter nobody reads mm-hmm. please read that book prabhupada says that that's a uh, just like bhagavata's law book uh, so nectar of devotion prabhupada says it is the law book of of bhakti of rasa if you want to understand what's devotion so pro i think in 40 in 29 chapter prabhupada writes there prabhupada gives example of nakul sahadev so when nakul sahadev they are going in a forest and they see footprints of krishna and then they are lamenting oh my dear krishna oh my dear pandu and madri madri she was there where are you you are gone and you didn't have opportunity to see lotus feet of lord krishna they lamenting because they didn't get this same opportunity what they are getting similarly arjuna is a pure devotee he is having compassion now what now what kind of compassion it's not material compassion because he is a pure devotee prabhupad mentions that compassion is devotional compassion he is thinking my god if these people die then what will happen I, my life is perfected i am with krishna they'll not attain krishna and they just waste their life that's the problem with arjuna deep within his heart superficially it is relatives and so many things but deep within his heart he is feeling it can happen no a person can think two things no it can happen just like in america it's if you have a girlfriend uh you pick up a fight with her it often happens you know she doesn't talk so you're fighting with her Uh, but deep within your heart she loves you and you love him no both things are going on you're fighting at the same time you're loving similarly arjuna both things are going on externally he's attached he doesn't know what to do internally he's feeling they'll miss the opportunity to attain krishna that's the first problem and that problem is solved after gita what why krishna what krishna says what if you read prabhupada's bhagavatam everybody who died on the battlefield of kurukshetra what happened to them liberation not just liberation they went to spiritual world yeah so they they went to spiritual world all of them so that problem was solved and that's where arjuna arjuna at the end of bhagavata arjuna told i'm ready to fight because he was convinced that anybody who dies in the presence of lord they will get liberation so he told fine krishna no problem is solved one problem is solved now why does arjuna deny to fight this is this is the point why does krishna want to fight what's the answer for that why krishna wants to fight prescribed no by what prescribed duty you want demonic force to be destroyed to set up a dharma for dharma a dharma no yeah yeah that may be one reason for setting up religious principles no but that's not the main thing because prabhupada says for setting up religious principles he could have done through any of his devotees he doesn't need to come to do such a small thing prabhupada mentions in the purport to in bhagavad gita if you read carefully we go back to the spiritual world no out of no if if i'll tell you the answer you'll be shocked and if you read uh, prabhupada I, i can't find here but i'll tell you the answer uh, somewhere it is uh krishna krishna wants to take revenge revenge that's what prabhupada writes in purport i'll 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 show you I'll, i can't find it this purport it's there in the purport krishna 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 told pandavas pandavas if he not kill them i'll kill them because they they tortured you and he could never forget dropdi he could never forget dropdi he wanted to take revenge and that's what is love about no love is all about uh, affection and revenge no both things go together <laughs> if you don't have revenge what's what's love about you know if somebody comes and kills your wife oh no problem that's okay i loved her 
but no problem <laughs> that's not love that's stupidity so krishna tells uh, prabhupada writes in purport krishna told arjuna arjuna if you don't kill i'll kill them because they tortured you and i can't see my devotees being tortured by anybody else that is why krishna wanted to continue this fight that was the main reason what prabhupada mentioned is purports so krishna also takes revenge is it krishna is most merciful and prabhupada says in actual devotion most cruel he can be both with devotees he can also be both no if we if we mess up around with krishna <laughs> do some some kind of crazy stuff he goes he is going to be very hard with us but for a benefit no so that's why he wanted to continue fight now what happened is in first chapter arjuna arjuna became confused i should fight not fight people are going to lose opportunity to serve krishna they are my relatives so many things were going on in his mind if you read bhagavad gita uh, females are going to become uh, Yeah, widows, no shrad, and um, in history nobody killed his own guru. Prabhupada writes in purports. Prabhupada mentions as if Arjuna asks uh, Krishna, Krishna, how did you deal with your own guru, Sandeepani Muni? And you are asking me to kill my guru. <laughs> It is funny, you know. You behave with your guru so nicely. and you asking me to kill my guru this is absurd he was fully krishna is giving some kind of instructions which are which he is not following himself so what kind of teacher you need you know you don't accept such instructions he is confused so second chapter is what is second chapter second chapter is contents of gita samurai second chapter krishna begins with the knowledge of soul now the question is arjuna's problem is whether to fight or not to fight but the answer is you're not this body your soul it is madness no so how do you reconcile this why does krishna begin like this he could have simply said arjuna you have to fight because of four reasons 1 2 3 4 are you ready if you're not ready then go to hell and even is going fight is going to happen tata bye bye finish finish but he doesn't do like that he second chapter he gives knowledge of soul why does he speak give knowledge of soul first Why not devotion? Why not serve dharma and paritajje? Why he gives knowledge of soul? Any idea? Anybody has any idea? Why do 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 like that? So what's the point with that? Or what's the point? What's the connection? All conditions are not attached to body. Recognize things that with the body, not with the soul. So, so we don't understand. What's beyond this body and things? So But how do you connect with this? No, unless we understand this not body and this beyond that, then nothing on what's happening on the field, the kruchi, that doesn't make sense. You know what Prabhupada writes in his purports. Prabhupada says, if you instruct a person who is lamenting, he will not understand anything what you are saying. In Dharma Shastra, it is said. never advise a person who is in sorrow no advice there are four conditions which you should not ever never get advice one is a person is sorrow another you should never advise husband and wife <laughs> don't do that <laughs> you will get in trouble <laughs> any side you take you will be in trouble <laughs> so don't advise nobody should advise you should never advise brahmanas don't advise them they are going to take your advice because you don't have knowledge now they have knowledge mm-hmm. brahmana can advise another brahmana but we are not in a position to advise a brahmana and uh, you should never advise until you are asked mm. that's that's a common saying no don't advise until you are hired no so arjuna is in a position of lamentation and he is not ready for any advice so the first task of krishna is to get rid of lamentation or sadness and that is why he begins with the knowledge of soul because if you are on bodily platform you are always shoshati and kankshati that's what krishna says you are always lamenting i lost this i have to get this i have to get that so krishna wants to bring him on the level of soul so that first of all he becomes happy okay i'm out no no problems with the body 
so that's what is second chapter about knowledge of soul so when yeah so two things one is uh, you said you started with three questions the so yeah. second question you said krishna did it for women that is in purport of first chapter yeah first chapter and i'll find and tell you and the third question you said why is the name this and you went to the second chapter so why is the why is the first chapter name is uh, i'll tell you i'll tell you afterwards keep it in your mind it's a, it's a suspense <laughs> i'll tell you afterwards i'm developing a story now here i'm developing a story okay so second chapter knowledge of soul so arjuna gets okay you know now he's out of lamentation now he's ready for advice counseling krishna wants to counsel him what's the third chapter's name karma yoga now krishna interestingly prabhupad translates karma yoga not as karma yoga he translates karma yoga as bhakti if you read entire bhagavad gita so krishna says krishna gives a principle to arjuna arjuna for your first duty is to do action karma means action yoga means linking with god now krishna brings the concept of service first and not knowledge this is very important because fourth chapter is gyana yoga but he doesn't bring knowledge krishna would have said to arjuna arjuna now your lamentation is over now you understand my counseling why do you have to fight one two three four reasons he doesn't do that first he says arjuna serve understand the concept of service because without service you are not ready to understand the knowledge which i am going to give you so that is why third chapter is karma yoga by starting with karma yoga krishna is trying to emphasize service is more important than knowledge you might have a lot of knowledge but if you don't serve what is the point of that so prabhupad often writes in his letters that uh, we don't want pandits we don't want pandits we want servants of god so third chapter is service but fourth chapter is gyana yoga knowledge because without knowledge service is mechanical is it you can keep on doing some things but why you are doing you do not know just like in india people go to temples <laughs> ting 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 what do you do you don't know what you are doing or maybe in uh, even in our iskon community uh, people chant hare krishna hare krishna why you are chanting exactly why you are chanting people don't understand why you are chanting prabhu writes an interesting line in the science of self realization you know that uh, explanation of mahamantra science of self realization prabhu writes here a statement hare krishna chanting is a best glorification and best prayer best glorification and best prayer so i read this statement uh, 18 years back and now i'm i'm figuring this out why did prabhupa said this best glorification best prayer because generally we chant to finish our rounds is it <laughs> that's that's practical right? you have to finish your sound because i got initiation and guru's order and that that's good starting no way but that's not the end so how this mantra is best glorification and best prayer you have to you have to get you have to get that realization so how to get that realization not by knowledge but by service but coupled with knowledge that is why fifth chapter is action in krishna consciousness fifth chapter is krishna is saying fuse knowledge and service don't do just service if you simply do service it will become mechanical if you simply take knowledge you will become scholar puffed up fuse knowledge will uh, will give enthusiasm in service and service will lead knowledge to realization there is a link between knowledge and service this is what is krishna is trying to explain in three chapters what is it uh, yeah knowledge in hindi if in sanskrit if you say gyan gyana will tusht uh, tusht karta hai karm ko and karma uh, karma pusht karta hai gyan ko point is tushti and pushti so knowledge will help uh, will give enthusiasm and service that's why we are doing class now and service will help knowledge to mature into realization so that is why krishna develops this theme arjuna you should fight arjuna was saying my god i am i am lamenting i am sad i should go to better go to forest and figure this out in my books why i am sad why should not i fight or krishna says you stupid you fight 
if you do service for me you'll get realizations yourself and in the night after the fight we'll have some classes that's no problem you know <laughs> because fight after sunset there's no fight now in dharma we were sitting back then we can discuss something so both things should go together morning you serve night you read prabhupada used to do entire day he was busy management and this entire night he was translating that that's prabhupada's life so you see the theme which krishna is developing fifth chapter action in krishna consciousness you should do both so which is important knowledge or service tell me both if i ask you to choose one which one do you should you choose first service yeah first service and then then knowledge so most important service because reward of service is service that's all so uh, and then sixth chapter is dhyana yoga now krishna says whatever you do as service to me do it with attention that is dhyan dhyana yoga so prabhupad says in his bhagavatam uh, he says in uh, when he is describing dhruv maharaj dhruv maharaj goes to forest and he goes to forest and dhruv maharaj is meditating So Prabhupada says, you take the principle, leave the process. So if you read sixth chapter, Krishna is explaining Dhyana Yoga, Ashtang Yoga. Krishna is explaining Asan, Pranayam, Yam, Niyam, so many things. But Krishna, uh, but Krishna is saying in sixth chapter, Arjuna, leave the process. Okay, thank you. Leave the process, take the principle. Now, what is the principle of Dhyana Yoga? principle of dhyana yoga is focus and attention yogis are doing that no focus on a point focus on kundalini focus on chakra krishna says okay arjuna let's be intelligent leave the process take the determination so just like prabhupad he was once he was in new york and they were there was one a servant and they were crossing the road and on the opposite end there was a female standing girl with mini skirts and it was snow there a lot of it was snow and she was standing in mini skirt so prabhupad prabhupad said to his servant you are seeing that girl he told well i am already seeing you know <laughs> it doesn't matter i am seeing her so prabhupad says you see she wants to ex- expose her body such a winter and such a cold and she wants to expose her body she is determined to expose her body similarly we should be determined to serve god <laughs> this is how prabhupad used to see Prabhupada used to see this word. I know we can't do that, but but that's what is Gita all about. Gita wants to bring you to that platform. It's not just verses. Gita is not a book. If you think it's a book, you're an illusion. It is Krishna Himself. Prabhupada says many times, no. And the verses and the chapters of Gita are steps to love of God. And each verse of Gita is is a realization. which if you keep on reading gita you'll realize slowly and steadily so dhyana yog chapter krishna says be determined in your service be determined in knowledge be focused if you're not focused you're going to lose so this is first six chapters focus on service and knowledge and develop your spiritual life and now seventh chapter begins what's it have to make <laughs> Make a small girl. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now uh, just sit. No problem. So, uh, so seven chapter. What's the name of seven chapter? Don't see. You have to tell me now. Prabhupada says you should learn this book as a law book. Even if I ask you in your sleep, you should know. You should know every statement. That's why I asked you. Have, have everybody read full stop? You should know which page, which statement Prabhupada is saying. I mean to say, Christians know. Islam, Muhammadans, they know. Quran, which page, which verse, which what what they say verse? They don't they don't call verse. They called uh, what they call verse as in Islamic. Mm. We are not good at anything. So. Yeah. <laughs> you don't, we don't know that. I we think don't know this, we don't know that. I think they call as riyat, riyat. They we call verse. They call riyat. they know each page what is bichriyat 
So we should know like that. So seventh chapter name is knowledge of absolute truth. Or? Yeah, I think knowledge of absolute. Yeah. So knowledge of absolute. So if you serve Krishna with knowledge in association of devotees and you're focused, my aim of life is Krishna. That's all. I don't want anything else. I don't want money. Money is required, but it's not the aim. I don't want prestige. Prestige is required to a certain extent, but it's not the aim of life. My aim of life is Krishna. And I live for Krishna and I'll die for Krishna. If slowly you get that conviction. And that conviction will change into devotion. That's why 7th chapter is knowledge of absolute. After you serve Krishna for some time and you know about him, you getting his knowledge, then a desire will develop to know him. You want to know him, no? Whom you are serving? <coughs> so let me ask you a question. How many of you read Krishna book? Daily? No. Why not? It's order of Prabhupada. Prabhupada's order. Every devotee should read Krishna book at least. Prabhupada says one hour. At least 45 minutes. You know why? Why we are not reading Krishna book daily? Question is not why we should read. Question is why we are not reading. <laughs> because we don't love him. No? If you love somebody, you want to know about him, no? Is it? Just like uh, all your all your householders, in your purse you carry photographs of your children and wife, most of them. <laughs> yeah, you carry, you know. Yeah. Whenever a householder, you're doing job, you're tired, and suddenly you get a realization, why, why the heck I'm doing all these things? And then you take out your purse and see your photograph. Oh, yeah. For them, I'm doing oh, This is nice. Okay, good. <laughs> it happens like that. So, uh, that's what is Krishna all about. When you serve Him nicely, when you are in association of devotees, you want to know about Him. How He talks, how He walks, how He looks. And that's what is nectar of devotion all about. That's why Prabhupada says, read nectar of devotion. Nectar of devotion is explaining to us how many flutes Krishna has. You have read about that? Vamshi and different types, Venu. And how, in how many languages Krishna talks? In how many ways Krishna walks? It is not one way he is walking, it is different ways he walks. How he interacts with devotees. So that is what is 7th chapter all about. A point will come in your life when you will want to know about God. After serving him nicely, you will become attached to him. Only after attachment you want to know about him, no? Before attachment, you will not... You will, not, you will not be interested to know about him much. So Krishna is developing a theme. Most of us are not even have reached 7th chapter. Is it? We are not at 7th chapter. Maybe we are, I think we are still at 2nd chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Most of us know. Or maybe 1st chapter. We are lamenting. <laughs> Prabhupada says, actually Prabhupada says in one of his letters, um, I think he's writing a letter to a devotee or in conversation that if a person is lamenting for anything in this material world, he's not even begin his spiritual life. He's not even begin. So most of us is first chapter, second chapter, knowledge of soul body, but beyond that, is still catching on. Seven chapter, if you're not reading Krishna book, you're not at seven chapter, simply as that. That's why I told these are not chapters. This is evolution of soul. There are 18 steps to love of God. That is 18 chapters. The so seventh chapter is, uh, you will want to know about Krishna. Yes. And what is eighth chapter? Supreme. Yeah, Attaining the Supreme. <coughs> so what is that all about? When you read Krishna, when you read about Krishna daily, 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 then a desire will develop in your heart. What is that desire all about? I want to attain Krishna. That's what Krishna says. Anybody knows that verse of Bhagavad Gita where Krishna says, the aim of devotional service is to develop a desire to attain me. What's that verse? It's quiz. Small quiz. What's your name? Everybody knows their name? Better forget your name. 
Remember Gita. That will help you. <laughs> Seriously, that will help you. No need of remembering your name. So, what's that verse? Uh, 12th chapter, 9th verse. Krishna says, Atha chittam samadhatum na shaknoshi maistiram. Arjuna, if you cannot focus your mind on me, then serve me. And by serving me, mam ichhaptum dhananjaya, you will develop a desire to attain me. This is our goal. The first goal in devotional service is to develop a desire to attain God. It's not love of God. It is to attain a desire to attain love of God. That's the first goal of devotional life. So that's 8th chapter. When you keep on reading about Krishna, then you develop a desire. Krishna, I want you. I don't want this material world. But we choose, you know, we are choosing. Every second there's a choice. You want this world or you want Krishna. And you know who will give that choice to you? Krishna. Krishna will confuse you. Krishna will say, that is good. Choose that. I am I am ordering you. Krishna will confuse a lot. But uh, anybody who has read Bhagavad Gita, who has knowledge, who has developed discrimination. So, 8th chapter is giving you discrimination and desire. Mm. Two things. Attaining the Supreme. And the ninth chapter, what's the name of ninth chapter? This is famous. The most confidential knowledge. That is devotional service. After you develop a desire to attain Krishna, then real devotional service begins. Before that desire, it's practice devotion. Prabhupada says, discusses this in one of his discussions. See, we, we are not actually, just like for example, if you are in a medical college, you are doing your course, degree course, you go back home, and your parents will call you. When your relatives will come, no parents will call. See, he's a doctor. <laughs> uh, we are still reading, but parents will say he's a doctor. Is it? Mm. So, if you are practicing some process, you might as well say he's a devotee. But are we devotees? We are not devotees. We are trying to be a devotee. Are we practicing devotional service? Not in real sense. We are practicing devotional service, but real devotional service begins after you develop a desire to attain Krishna. That's real devotional service. And uh, that is that is nine chapter. So nine chapter Krishna gives secrets, most confidential knowledge. The secrets of devotional service. So what is a secret? Okay. In third chapter he talked about service. But in nine chapter he talks about secrets of service. There's a difference. So you're ready now. After you have done service, after you get knowledge, after you have developed desire to attain Krishna, you know Krishna, then he will reveal you secrets of devotional service. So even if you read 9 chapter, and if you not have developed that eligibility, that secrets will not be revealed to you. Because you see, if the chapter's name is most confidential knowledge, why it is being distributed to all of us? <laughs> First of all, it's most confidential. It's not even confidential. And it's open. And then what's it all about, you know, Krishna's bluffing or what? <laughs> no, this is most confidential because even if you read, you will not understand. <laughs> you won't understand this thing. It will not be revealed. It's a question of revelation. It's not a question of reading. We can read it, but we get to that platform after some time, after a lot of service, a lot of dedication. <coughs> so most confidential knowledge. Then as you do devotional service to God, you keep on serving Him, you get realizations. What is 10th chapter? Yeah. Opulences of, of Supreme. Of Absolute or Supreme? Of the Supreme, I think so. Of the Supreme, I think so. Yeah, of, the Supreme. of the Absolute, the opulence of the Absolute. Yeah. So 10th chapter, after you do devotional service to Him, Krishna reveals secrets. Then you want to know more about Krishna. You serve him, you want to know about Krishna, then you serve him more and you want to know more about him. So 10th chapter, Krishna is revealing his power. His power, his opulences. How Krishna is powerful. 11th chapter, he is showing his power. He is giving evidence. Krishna is saying, I am not just speaking, I am not a fool, I am not a flatterer. I am giving evidence. See, this is my power. So 11th chapter is universal form. That science, science, no, observation. And then 12th chapter is devotional service. 12th chapter Krishna is revealing his sweetness. 
sweetness power and sweetness that's what krishna all about what is more important power or sweetness Sweet. sweetness, sweetness no? actually sweetness is more powerful than power mm-hmm. is it <laughs> because uh, yeah cleopatra she ruled she could control <laughs> great king you know <laughs> the sweetness is more powerful than power just like pen is more powerful than sword you can destroy nations by pen by sword you can destroy some army that's all so uh, 12 chapter is all about sweetness madhurya of krishna now he, gita should practically finish by this point <laughs> why doesn't what 13 chapter nature enjoyed nature consciousness now there's a problem with every endeavor there's a problem no krishna speaks in bhagavad gita atha pritak cheshta with every endeavor there's a fault there has to be a fault so we are doing devotional service there are faults there are anarthas there are obstacles so what obstacles you are going to face when you are on this path that krishna talks about in 13 chapter and 14 chapter two chapters two obstacles 13 chapter is nature enjoyed consciousness the first obstacle in devotional life will begin not from outside but from inside mm. your own enjoying propensity nature enjoyer and consciousness your own consciousness is an obstacle you are obstacle for yourself that's a secret no who likes to think if you ask anybody are you good or bad <laughs> so what he'll say yeah, i think i'm good you know even a murderer he will say if you ask a murderer do you feel you're a good person or he's going to say yes i am good i murdered three person but still i am good you know because i was doing for my family <laughs> and <laughs> Uh, so blah blah blah. Nobody feels that he's bad, except Vaishnavas. Vaishnavas feel that they're that they're bad. Ordinary people they can't understand. So Krishna says the the most the biggest obstacle in devotional life is we are ourselves. The sooner we realize this, the better we are. Because generally, you know what we think? We think he's obstacle, he's obstacle, he's obstacle, she's obstacle, and uh, what about me? Well, I'm. I'm I'm a seventh Goswami, and I have no problem with that. <laughs> so, and that's an illusion. Um, you know what? Somebody asked in in Bible. I was reading Bible, so they asked God uh, that that my dear God, why do you want to destroy this world? So God replied that you see, I don't I don't need to destroy this world. You're yourself sufficient to destroy yourself. <laughs> So I don't need to do anything. That's all. I just watch. You destroy yourself. That's the problem with all of us. We are harming ourselves, and that is thirteen chapter all about. So we have to. That's internal obstacle. <coughs> and fourteen chapter is three modes of material nature. There is some external obstacle. Now, what is external obstacle? Three modes: mode of goodness, passion, ignorance. Okay, let me ask you: What is mode of passion? Anybody? more 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 okay good anybody else you see any time you have to give answer no uh, you should give some practical answer theoretical answer is good okay uh, what is mode of passion simple behind you see what's behind you television <laughs> that is embodiment of <laughs> mode of passion that's mode of passion if you use it wrongly no your cell phones mode of passion internet mode of passion this what is mode of passion all about these are all products of mode of passion what is ignorance mode of ignorance what do you say so far yeah <laughs> actually <laughs> <laughs> at least for devotees who chant they know so far is mode of ignorance <laughs> you sit and you're off don't sit on so far and chant never so far will invite you <laughs> please come i am comfortable don't do that so that's mode of ignorance your bed your sofa and what is mode of goodness you know what is mode of goodness morning time yeah this natural scenery morning and all this is a mode of goodness no 
So Krishna, this is, but these are all obstacles, external obstacles. It will stop you from attaining Krishna. If you don't use it properly. If you don't have the knowledge to use it properly, there will be an obstacle. So two obstacles, internal and external. But if you keep on doing devotional service, you will surpass these obstacles by grace of Krishna. And, but the point is, we should know whether we are advancing in devotion or not. No, we can't shoot arrows in darkness. We can't just keep on finishing our 16 rounds Mm -hmm. and doing this program in once a week. And that's it, you know. We should know whether we are going forward or backward. No, that's genuine. That's why Prabhupada says this is science. So science means effect, cause and everything. So three chapters, Krishna is speaking and Krishna is telling three effects of devotional service. So what's 15 chapters name? Yoga. Yoga, uh, Was that? Of the Supreme? Yeah, 15 chapter. So... When you do devotion service and you surpass these obstacles, three effects are going to come in your life. The first effect is yoga of the Supreme. That means you will have realizations about Krishna, his devotional service and his devotees. All three. 15 chapter is talking about three subjects. God, devotion and devotee. If you read 15 chapter, 20th verse to 29th verse, all these things Krishna is explaining. So you get realizations about God, His devotion, His devotees and their link. Their mutual interdependence on them. 16th chapter is divine and demoniac. If you keep on doing devotional service, you will develop good qualities. Divine qualities, demoniac qualities, it's supposed to reduce. Enviousness, lust and all this, they will reduce. Divine qualities uh, like... Uh, satyam, saucham, tapa, ahimsa, all these qualities will develop. Second second effect. And third effect is 17th chapter. What's that name? Divisions of faith. Your faith for Krishna will mature, increase and condense. Three effects of devotional service. The first is, um, you will have realizations about devotee, devotion and God. Second is, you level up good qualities, divine qualities, not good qualities, divine qualities. And third is, uh, you, your faith becomes strong. And what is 18 chapter? Conclusion. Perfection. Conclusion. Perfection of? Yeah, perfection of renunciation. What is perfection of renunciation? Love of God. That's perfection of renunciation. Renunciation means leaving everything, no? Your mind leaves everything. Why? Because he does got something special. Krishna, that's love of God. And then that's perfection of life. You are in love of God. That's 18 chapter. Mm-hmm. So you get 18 steps to the temple of love of God. Now we have to see where we are. On which step we are there. <laughs> <laughs> and then decide how to go forward. But Krishna has explained everything. This is Gita all about in summary. It's 45 minutes. Uh. And so, any questions? Yeah, I just the first stop time. Here. What is the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, that question <laughs> observing the armies. Yeah, now you got the answer. Have you got the answer? Why the first chapter's name is observing the armies? Why? Tell me why. I've explained you everything. Because we are each one of those situations standing on the battlefield. Okay, good, good. But, uh, yeah, fine. That, that may be one point. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I just wanted to ask, did you get an answer in my lecture? That that's my point. I I've already given you the answer. I given you the answer. You know, you know what observing the armies? Why the name is? Because Arjuna is observing the armies, isn't it? He is observing from his own vision. And after reading Gita, what happens? You are trained to observe through the vision of Krishna, not your own vision. That's what is Gita all about. That is what the obstacle was. We were <coughs> obstacle for ourselves. We are trying to see this world by our own vision. But Krishna says, no, see through my vision. How I am seeing this fight, you see like that. And then you will understand why I am asking you to fight. 
That's why observing the armies is observing word is very important. Krishna wants to change our perception. That's what is Gita all about, no? Our perception is changed. You all are the same, no? I mean to say after initiation you don't glow. <laughs> Nothing happens, no? <laughs> same person, same dress, everything same. But what changed? Your perce- your observation, your perception. And that that is where the first chapter is observing the armies. You got to this point. That's what is first chapter all about. Okay, any other questions? Otherwise... Is a Dharma Kshetra, Kuru Kshetra. Hmm. Explain about this. Uh, Prabhupada explains in the purport, long purport. Prabhupada says Dharma Kshetra. Dharma Kshetra because uh, Gita starts with the word Dharma. And Gita ends with the verse. What's the last verse of Gita? You don't know this? Come on. Last verse of Bhagavad Gita. Last verse of Bhagavad Gita, not, not the essence. 18th chapter, 76th verse. What's that verse? Don't see. <laughs> yeah, you should know this. Yeah, you should know this. Next time I'll not come here if you don't know this. What's the point of coming here? You're all devotees. See, I'm, see seriously, I'm serious. I mean, this is the only book we are reading. This is our book. And we don't know our book. It is. It is... We are damned, you know. I mean, those people are better than us. At least materialist people are better. They know their books better than us. We're, so then, uh, it's a shame, no? It's a shame. It's not shame for us. It's shame for Krishna. Because anyway, we don't have anything with us, no? To get ashamed of. But we belong to Krishna. And Krishna becomes ashamed, you know, if we don't know these things. So please read. The, my whole point is to inspire you. To read Prabhupada books. That's why I explained. And you know, you might think the explanation is nice, but it's all there in Prabhupada books. Every statement I've told it's there in Prabhupada books. Every statement. Okay. So Dharma last verse is Yatra Yogeshwaro Krishna. Yatra Partho Dhanudhara. Tatra Sri Vijayar Bhutir Nitir Dhruva Dhruva Nitir Matir Mama. Last word is Mama. And first verse is word is Dharma. So you connect both of them. Mama and Dharma. So Mama is Krishna is saying surrender to me. It ends with me. Start with Dharma. What is Dharma? Dharma is all about me. Krishna is saying it's all about me. It's all about anything you read in Dharma. Anything you read in Dharma, it's all about me. You have to connect to me. Otherwise you are an illusion. So this word purposefully it starts with dharma. And also it starts with dharma because Prabhupada explains. Because Gita is all about dharma. It's all about religion. Krishna is not telling what is dharma. Krishna is redefining dharma. There are two different things. Because previous to Gita everybody knew what is dharma. People knew. They were pandits, no? People knew dharma, Ganga and all these shrat. People knew. But Krishna is redefining dharma in Gita. Krishna is saying, because if Gita was talking about dharma, then, then why would Krishna tell Sir Dharman Paritajya? <laughs> or I'm, go, I'm, I'm here to establish Dharma. At the same time I'm telling you abandon all, <laughs> all religion. It doesn't make any sense, no? So Krishna is telling, Krishna is telling real Dharma is to love me. Abandon all kind of Dharma which is devoid of love. That's the, that's the point here. He's not here to establish religious principles per se. He is here to establish religious principles in his own way, in it, in the true sense. Because knowledge got distorted. That's what Gita is talking all about. That's why it starts with Dharma. To redefine them. Now, um, the ninth chapter, secret point I missed. Like, what was that? that like, secret Most point? confidential knowledge? Yeah. What was that? that secrets what of devotion. There are secrets of devotional service. Of devotional service. We can read but we can't access it now. That access, the key to that access will be given by Krishna when you're ready. It's not given to everybody. <clears throat> it's open secret. Gita is open secret. It's there, but Prabhupada says actually, Prabhupada says, if this book is not read with devotees, it will always be locked for you. You can buy, but it's locked. Yes. Prabhupada says in one of his uh, conversations, that's a Hare Krishna mantra. 
Prabhupada says you can you can chant Hare Krishna once, but it's not going to work if we don't if we are not in association with devotees. So that's why it has to be led with devotees. How to um, you know uh, you read everything, but then when the temptation comes, yeah, uh, then atha kena prayukta yam papam jarati keshava. Krishna says, why Arjuna? Even after knowing so much. I am enticed, I am attracted to this temptations and sinful things. That's the question, no? Yeah. So, answer is there. But it doesn't, I mean, that time mind tries to convince that that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what should... See, uh, that's what my whole point was. You know what, If you if you try to examine this word the word will examine you. If you try to catch this material word, the word will catch you. So the point is, the question is not that why we are getting tempted to this word. That's not the question. The question is, why I want this word. You want this, that is why you are getting tempted. It is not that I don't want and still I am getting tempted. That's not the case. That's illusion. <coughs> That's illusion. That's illusion. If you don't want, nothing is going to happen. That's what Krishna says in 6th chapter, Sankalp. That Dhyan Yoga, no? Sankalp. If your, if your intention is correct, nothing is going to happen. Because Krishna is there in your heart, no? So he sees. Actually, we choose, we choose wrong. That's why we are attracted to wrong. If we don't choose wrong consciously, there will be, there'll be no temptation. But the point is, uh, we don't realize that we are choosing wrong. That's the point. Things happen so fast. We are choosing wrong. <laughs> temptations are so high. No, temptations are high because we choose, we are choosing wrong. In past, we are choosing wrong, wrong, wrong. Krishna says, okay, I bless you. <laughs> Take wrong things. We are attracted to wrong things. I bless you. Then you can't help. If Krishna's blessings are there, how can you resist temptation? <laughs> He's super soul, he'll bless you. So we should not come to a point where we need these kind of blessings of Krishna. We don't need these kind of blessings, no. But it all depends on you. So you know a drop and drop makes an ocean. Small <coughs> drops. So we consciously choose something wrong, then we avoid it, then we choose wrong, then we avoid, then we choose wrong, then we avoid. One day Krishna is watching everything. Krishna is saying, my God, you are so, you are so, becoming so mad about these things. Okay, then take it. Mm. So at that point, you will get temptation. Mm. So the, <coughs> you landed yourself in your problem. That's, that's the point. So that's what Krishna says. Most important thing in devotion is sankalp, intention, not action. And not even knowledge. That's, mm. That is there in 9th chapter. Most confidential knowledge. Mm -hmm. I didn't touch upon that, but it's not a. So there is one. Uh, I will sound very stupid, but I'm that's okay. Everybody is stupid. I'm also stupid. So you know, like uh, the six Goswamis. Uh, so they are the highest Vaishnavas. We look at them. That probably um, not even one moment. Shun. Yeah, yeah. They. We cannot have that what they had a consistent yeah. devotion. So they are the highest. So? And then they went to spiritual world and they became Manjiri. So? So for me, personally, it doesn't sound very motivating. Why? One is all the good positions are already been taken. <laughs> <laughs> see, 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 you know what? First point is forget me. Forget me. Uh, this for everybody. This is not for him. Seriously, you, you, I'm, I'm telling you. You open your cell phone, keep it on recording in the morning, listen in the night. You'll be just talking about yourself. Hundred <laughs> percent. Even here in this program, I like this. I like that. I like that. I, like, uh, I did that. I made that prasadam. What, what is I doing here? If you don't forget me, you're not going back to God. Right? This is the problem. You know, there's a saying in Kannada. I forgot that Kannada saying. 
uh, you might be knowing, uh, Kanak Das, he said. He said, when, when I will go, then I may go. You understand? <laughs> when I will go, then I may go. That's the point. So, forget me. And your problem is solved. Your question is solved. <laughs> yeah. It's not difficult. Seriously, it's not difficult. It's a matter of practice. Krishna says practice. It's difficult. It's not difficult if you're talking about God always. If you're engaged in service, it's not difficult. It seems difficult, but it's not. You know why it's difficult for us, but it's not difficult for Krishna. It's impossible for us, because but Krishna can make impossible <coughs> possible. That faith we have, He'll do this for us, where we want. Yeah, bro. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, like you started with the observation. So, uh, first... Oh my God, yeah, first what? Living I never expected this. <laughs> oh no. Okay, yeah, I'll just so, um, this. So, living being is perceiving mm. his own perception, but after the 18 chapters, the perception changed for Arjun. Mm. So, he, he could understand the how what Krishna desires. So, here Dhritarashtra was listening everything from first verse to yeah, 1700 verse. So but he, he didn't, was, he didn't change. He did not change. Yeah. He didn't change. And he was... Listening very attentively. Yes, yeah, so what's the conclusion? This means attentive listening is not enough. No. <laughs> Seriously. That's a conclusion. Attentive listening is not. You have to you have to put it in action. He never put it in action. That's a problem with him. He was just listening. Can okay. say his listening was motivated also? Yeah. Huh? His listening was motivated also. He wanted to understand what happened to my sons. That's what primarily his interest was. He was apprehensive for his sons. He was not listening with a proper mood. Mm. He was on devotee also, that's why. Of course. That's why he didn't do service. He didn't put in action, just listening. Nothing will happen with that. So, I think... Pretty much that's over.